Hey Russ, I got all your emails about all the trouble that you're having with the carburetors that have been freshly rebuilt, uh, not by me, but uh, by somebody else. And I'm going to do what I can to help you in terms of actual practical um, information and assistance, uh, especially now that you've got the carburetors already installed on your vehicle. So what you can do... Uh, with vehicle with the uh, carburetors installed in the vehicle, it, help, hope it helps to have the air log off so you can access and look inside the throats. But from the top, you're going to remove your float bowl. This is let's let's say this is assuming you've tried running the carburetors, the fuel pump is working, and the fuel pressure is fine, and you're getting fuel into the carburetors, but you're not functioning. So, what you're going to do is take your float bowl cover off, and first thing you're going to notice is that the fuel level inside. The float ball should be right up above, right up about with this septum right here at this level or maybe just a smidge below it. That will tell you that you're, that's a quick check to make sure that your fuel level is, uh, your float is set at the right level. You certainly can uh, flip it over and uh, check it, uh, the float level against the, um, uh, met the uh, specifications uh, 39 to 40 millimeters in fact uh, let me get a float right now and i forgot to do that let me get a float hang on a second i forgot to check i forgot to uh, have this already loaded up so anyway I just took this float bowl cover off I've already pulled the gasket off and um, the uh, the needle and cedar out so what you're going to do is you want to measure the distance from here from the float bowl cover with the gasket in place to this upper part of the circle right here and you want 39 to 40 millimeters so you're going to end up with the uh, in this this range right there up against the needle and seat um, anyway that will give you your actual float level and you can also uh, remove this screw right here uh, the jet there's a jet inside here Let's see if I've got one real quick yep all right this is that's a jet and it says number 50 on there it's got a hole on it in it someplace there it is anyway pull that jet out and you can pull your accelerator pump discharge nozzle out and as you goose the throttle goose the throttle you should see fuel coming from this portion of the float bowl bubbling burbling just a little bit of burble coming out of here and obviously the fuel level should reduce here the fuel level will stay the same here but this is what feeds your accelerator uh, pump circuit and you've got a little check valve down the bottom there you can see the check valve down the bottom that's allowing fuel to go one way out and up through here and so what you should have is a little burbling effect coming uh, out of here and then um, you can always also take your discharge nozzle and make sure the uh, the hole in the end of it is is not plugged and See what else you can do here. Make sure your G55 uh, idle jets are not plugged. That those are critical for idle. If you want your your thing your carburetors to idle, let's see. Here's the um, here's the discharge nozzle. Here's the accelerator pump discharge nozzle, and that hole is very very teeny. Make sure it's not clogged. And let's see if we got a G55 in here. Oh well, by the way, here's what the um, this is what that check valve looks like at the bottom of the float bowl. It has a little teeny ball in there, four millimeter nylon ball, and it just acts as a check valve. And if it's if it's stuck and not working, not closing or not opening, things are not going to work right. And where's G55? All right. Uh, you'd think I'd be better prepared, but I'm not, and that's life in the big city. All right, here's the G55. Got a teeny tiny hole right there. All it does is screws down in there and snugs down, 
and if you if this is clogged or the ports in here are clogged you're not going to have an idle and if you have any troubles you take your um, b12 and spray the heck out of the all uh, these passageways in here let's see if there's anything else i can think of uh let's see while you're here make sure that when um, you're closed when this Butterfly is closed here. Let's see. No, let's do that. We'll do those adjustments out there. All right. Now we're going to go out and actually go to an engine with some carburetors on it. Now I've already warmed up this engine so we wouldn't have to, but I wanted to show you from start to finish. Now this actually works. I have taken the liberty of actually removing the idle mixture screws and the idle screws so that you can see how it works from start to finish. This is real time, no trick photography. So what you're gonna do is first off, disconnect your linkage so that the carburetors are independent of each other. We don't have any linkage interfering with our activity. So now we're going to screw in an idle speed and what I'm doing is I'm holding my lever to where I make contact with the screw I'm making contact I'm screwed in one and a half turns there's one half there's two halves three halves okay that give us our initial setting same for this one over here And the reason these are independent, uh, the di linkage is disconnected, so these are independent. And we don't have to worry about the linkage interfering with our activities. Alright, so I've got this one going in. Screw this down until we make contact. Contact. Okay, one and a half turns. There's half, half, half. Close enough for gummit work. Now then, idle mixture screws. One thing I might, one thing I do here is take your idle mixture screw, paint it with some magic marker, and screw it in. until it just touches you don't have to do don't need a screwdriver just screw it until it touches back it out and see where your marking is on your needle make sure you got good uniform marking all the way around and you see a little line right there got good marking all the way around so that means we've got a a, a seat for the idle mixture screw to go against and dovetail with and work properly. So what we're going to do now is screw this idle mixture screw in until it just touches. You see I'm just using just barely using my fingers. See just barely using my fingers. All I want to do is to set to, for it to touch. You're not uh, assembling the Eiffel Tower here. You don't crank down on this thing as hard as you can that doesn't do any good except ruins the carburetors. Okay, now backing it out one and a half turns. Half, half, half. Now we're gonna do the same thing over here. I'm not gonna take time to mark it. You saw that process. This is a pain in the ass because the bar is in the way, but You can do it. All right, once again, snugging it down. That's easy. Need my crooked screwdriver to go around corners. All 
All right, we snugged it down. Back down. Here's a half, half, half. All right. Those are your baseline settings. Um, before we do anything else, let's make sure our second barrels are closing properly. And you're going to do that by holding throttle here, and you're going to see if you got any play or no play. You want just a minimal, minuscule amount of play to no play. Let's see if I can zoom in here. But what you have here is a follower off of the first barrel that it contacts the second barrel and after you've accelerated and backed off on the throttle that follower right there forces the second barrel closed and you want it to keep the second barrel closed for idle purposes and adjusting and but you don't want it to be so tight that this follower if you have it too tight against the second barrel it will start to open up the first barrel artificially so see just a little bit of movement let's go over here to this one let's see this is not going to work where are we okay here we go got your fingers finger down here on the throttle and over here we got just the teeniest amount of movement now this is adjustable because as you adjust your idle speed screws, it's going to change the clearance down here on this little follower. It's going to change the clearance down here and, and, the, and therefore the clearance right here. So you'll get a final adjustment later on. But what you want to make sure is that this is closed. And if you have the carburetors off the vehicle and you shine a bright light from this side, you should not be able to see a ring of light in there. If you see light, that means your second barrel is not closing all the way and it's gonna make your life difficult. All right, so now, uh, at this point, you can also check your idle discharge stream right in there. All right, so you're your discharge nozzles up here and it's going to squirt fuel out and what you want to do is have that fuel going straight down past this pre-atomizer so i'm going to i'm going to goose it and you should be able to see the fuel coming out let's get the camera down a little bit better so we're looking up all right you see see the fuel coming out yeah okay now that's what you want fuel coming out do that on both carburetors make sure you've got fuel uh, discharging and it's a nice solid stream you don't want a little piddly stream you want a solid stream going down through the throat of the carburetor um, next you're going to make sure that your linkage is, is adjusted as best as you can so that you don't have any interference from the linkage artificially increasing or decreasing your throttle. So what you're going to do is hold this one. All right, hold, holding this one steady. Right here steady. And you're going to come over here and adjust the turnbuckle on this rod to where when you put it in place, it doesn't idle. It doesn't idle alter it too much you can see I got a little alter I got a little movement right there and I try to snap this thing on but let's see if it'll snap on and go to this original place when it could when it gets down to this narrow part here and I'm gonna call that close enough for well let's see let's try it let's try another one here let's see what we got all right let's open this up a little bit all right, much better. See, I didn't did not move anything. Now then, we make sure we've got fuel. Uh, we got our, our synchrometer so we can synchronize the carburetors. And I've got the, the choke tied together with a wire. Um, 
because this one's uh, just flops around compared to this one and it'll, it'll close on you while you're testing things and so it makes it much easier without the air log you can see what the hell's going on so what we're going to do now is choke it let's see we're going to switch on and choke it no wait a minute all right before we do that we're going to check when we get it all warmed up we're going to check our airflow you want minimal airflow through the second barrel you want these things to be uh, on this meter it's be, it, lower than two two or lower you want them to be to where they almost have no air going through them whatsoever and then these the first barrel is what it idles on and you're going to have uniform airflow uh, no matter what it is either uh, on this meter it's going to run between uh, around five to six and let's see i've got a ship i got a delivery coming in um well, he'll be here in a minute what else can we check here um oh second barrel is always closed off second barrel second barrel idle mixture screws closed off you do not need that under any circumstances so that's closed off let me go get my delivery parts delivery all right so let's say we are okay going to uh, switch on going to choke it let's see what happens Now that's not bad for your initial adjustments. We're going to uh, re we're going to fine tune it when it gets warmed up a little bit more. Where we get our idle that we want. We're on a, we're on too fast of an idle right now. Let's check the uh, check the radiator. It's getting warm. All right. Now let's check our. You notice the linkage? Let's see. Notice I pull up on the linkage, things change. So that's how important linkage is on these cars. All right, got the linkage disconnected. Time to start tuning. Let's check our airflow. All right, you see almost no movement there. Yeah, I got too much movement there. So that means this is, close that down. We don't have the follower adjusted correctly, so that's why we have too much airflow. So we got about two there. Got one, one and a half there. All right, so now we're, we've got those closed off to where we know we're not running on the second barrels. Now let's just let's check our airflow. We're at about three and a half, four. That is too low, so we're going to jack it up. Half a turn, and then maybe, yeah, half a turn. Half a turn. So let's see what we got in the way of. All right, we're at six here. Way too much there. Seven, way too much there. All right, six there, six there. Now then, idle mixture screws are next. We I know we're not running very well because of the idle mixture screws. Now what you want to do is screw these in and out until the engine idles at best possible RPM. And you'll be able to hear this. I use the tachometer a lot of times. Uh, analog tach tachometer makes life a lot easier. Let's see if, we can, if we're running lean or if we're running rich. So I'm screwing it in to lean it out. Hear the engine pick up. 
We just picked up a lot of RPM. Picking up more. So maybe the initial uh, screw in, uh, screw out on these could have been one instead of one and a half turns. Now we're starting to drop off. I'm gonna screw it into where you can hear it dramatically dropping off. And I hear it almost dying. Packing it out. All right, sounds good right there. Let's go over here. Same thing, we're holding on to our throttle lever. Here it start to drop off. Keep going, it's getting rough. All right, backing it out. Too far out. You get a lot of noise through here and also start to falter a little bit on the idle. Turn it back in. Guys, so we're gonna get the midpoint. Somewhere in there is the perfect spot for this thing. And you have to do that by sense of feel and listening to the engine. Alright, I like that right there. Now let's go back and check our airflow. 